Kenny Omega versus MJF. Okay, the one negative. It was on three days' notice. So I don't even know. how We'll find out how many people watch this. This was so awesome. <laughs> I don't have enough great things to say about it. The story is that MJF was beating Kenny at his own game. He was the superior athlete in this match. When Kenny did a ba- dive, Max did a bigger dive. When Kenny tried a big move, MJF countered it into a bigger move. And the only time Kenny got sustained advantage was when he beat Max at his own game and was more vicious, doing shit in the apron or putting him through a table or whatever. So they're going back and forth. It's all awesome. It's a half hour of greatness. Just greatness. It just rules. Uh, there is, after the second commercial break, uh, they're fighting on the floor. There's, all, uh, there's spots on the dashboard. Eventually, Don Callis comes out. This is the point. Mm. Don Callis comes out wielding a screwdriver. And it's not a random point either. Kenny Omega has a long series of V-triggers and Snapdragons and more V-triggers, another V-trigger. And he looks like he has the championship regained. He's going to defeat Maxwell Jacob Freeman. He hoists him up on the shoulders for the one-winged angel. And this is when Don Callis comes out and Kenny drops Max to ward off this incoming threat. Now, in the end, Kenny turned around and like got a cradle and uh, Don never interfered. The match continued. But that makes this so genius because we'll never know whether Kenny would have actually hit this move. And if he had, we'll never know if MGF would have stayed down. So Kenny can say, damn it, Don Callis, you robbed me of my best chance to beat MJF, but we still got a clean finish to this match. And uh, again, they go back and forth. The other subplot is Max's ego always gets the better of him. Many, many times he had the advantage, but stopped to pose or taunt Kenny, and it came back to bite him. And in the end, it almost happened again. He uh, hit the uh, heat seeker, was not to pose, and made a delayed cover, and then Kenny still kicked out. So now Max is desperate. He's been like a half hour. He's done almost all of his big moves. Goes to back to the friendship corner. He's going to do Adam Cole stuff. So he tries a Panama Sunrise. It gets countered. But uh, MJF does more Adam Cole spots. Does the backdrop into the corner and the super kick where the guy's upside down. Finally hits the Panama Sunrise and then gets a heat seeker for the win. And uh, they embrace afterwards. It was awesome. Everyone wants to see this. Great stuff. I have no idea how many people actually watched it. I'm worried it may have been in the dark. I don't think it was going to be in the dark, but uh, I thought this match was great. That it was a great match. I did not like it, apparently, as much as you. I did not think it was one of the uh, the oh. greatest matches of the year, but I thought it was a really great match. And I think I got thrown off by your, your uh, whatever you thought the story of this match was. I thought that uh, I did not. Here's the problem. Kenny Omega is an absolutely unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable athlete. And I don't even think MJF would would sit here and tell you that he's a better athlete than than Kenny Omega. Because virtually nobody is. Right. <laughs> and he was so fucking great in this match. And MJF did a great job too. But like, God, Kenny was just... He is so fast and he is so crisp and everything just looked unbelievable. Now, there was the story that MJF had to win this match, and so he had to pull out some shit that he's never done before. And I don't know if he's ever done a Fosbury flop, (laughs) but he has never done a Fosbury flop on AEW television. No. And this fucking guy, Kenny does the big Terminator dive, and, uh, and he throws MJF into the ring, and MJF goes running, and he hits the ropes, and, uh, and he hits a Fosbury flop dive. And it wasn't perfect. Mm-mm. Uh, the landing was a little bit scary, but God damn it, he did that move, and the place went crazy, and they're, they're doing, uh, what the fuck, they, I think they chanted holy shit or something like that. I could not fucking believe my eyes that he, he pulled that thing off. So he did that, and then, you know, they had a, a wrestling, seg- uh, like a little, uh, you know, wrestling back and forth early, and, uh, and they were going to do the deal where uh, MGF did a, a head spring, and Kenny did a kip up. Yes. And Kenny slipped and didn't make it all the way mm-hmm. up. And Which I, fit into the story. I don't know if that was real or fake. I don't either. <laughs> and I don't give a shit because it was awesome. Yes. So, uh, yes, every now and then, you know, Max would, uh, you know, he would go back to his old ways and he would get a little cocky and then he would pay for it. 
And uh, awesome counters there at the end. I mean, they're hitting. You know this MJF fucker? This guy's always saying, I hate New Japan. I don't watch New Japan. Really? Where the fuck did you get that main Japan, brother? Yeah. You just pull that out of some fucking video game? He hits Shingo's fucking finish there. Big kick out. And he does a lot, by the way. And then uh, finally, they did the the big stuff on the outside, the power bomb on the guardrail, which looked like it sucked. And then uh, all the stuff at the end, the one winged angel counters, and then the uh, Panama sunrise with the cradle, which really was about a three and a half count, but uh, the ref called it a two and a half. And the, that was one of them where the crowd was like, there were some boos after that because he kicked out so late off that cradle. And then he hit the sunrise, hit the heck, uh, second heat seeker, got the pin. And yeah, this match. Hey, the match was awesome. Don't get me wrong. It was an awesome match. God damn. I think it was Excalibur that called it very early on. He was talking about the the style of Kenny Omega and how he, you know, wrestles that super junior style and Max. And he kind of paused and goes, you know, that main event US style. Uh as as if to say, you know, he, he takes a little bit slower than the super juniors and uh the match was tremendous and Max proving Excalibur wrong the whole time by doing all these crazy super junior things that uh, we never see him do and match was absolutely tremendous tremendous and this is the kind of stuff they should have had on battle of the belts just saying well this would have been a good battle of the belts main event but it should have been promoted for like six months or something like that yeah and uh sure. battle of the belts would have had to go on first because uh that late time slot's just never gonna that's never gonna work this obviously would have been much better on pay-per-view but it had to be done on this day, or uh, you just can't... Uh, the dates wouldn't have worked out You can't right. tell the story. Yeah. But honestly, like to me, here's the thing. If I if I were Tony Khan and it was my money, there ain't no way this show's going on collision. I don't care. I don't care. Just say, MJF, you win, you got the record. That's it. <laughs> this is a fucking pay-per-view match, and, uh, you know, people would have paid for this. A lot of people. This would have done 140,000 buys, this uh, this match on pay-per-view. Maybe more. But uh, they wanted to tell the story, and they did. And, uh, you know, I've watched a lot of Kenny Omega matches. And uh, I don't want to say that they were, they were holding back, because I don't think they were. But uh, they could do this again better if they decide to go on mm. pay-per-view. Yeah. I will say that. And then they showed uh, Joe and Hobbs looking on backstage. Yes. MJF offered and, him the handshake. And Wardlow. gave it to him. And Bullet Club. Yeah. There's still many, many enemies lining up to face MJF. He's going to need some friends. But you know who is a friend by the end of the show? Kenny Omega. I think Kenny and the Bucks are going to step up and be MJF's partner. It could be. Yeah. They could hmm. do that. I'm not saying that it's, it's you know, going to be uh, the acclaimed. What I'm saying is at some point... MJF and the Acclaimed are doing an eight. I'm sure there will be a payoff to that it whole is, thing, yes. It is inevitable. Yes. He does not do these stories and not pay him off. I mean, you know, he they they clearly moved away from the quarters, but if you saw the promo that he did right before that match with Juice on Dynamite, he did everything except say the word quarters. I mean, in his mind, in his promo, he was still telling that fucking story and he was going to go out there and kill that guy. Yeah. So, yes. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.